Harold. I'm afraid I need you to come with me. Oh, hi, Major. What's the matter? Is that leak bothering you again? It's your fine, your unpaid fine. I had a fine? You still do. Tubing without the proper credit on your tube card. Can you settle it now? Uh, no. But wait, I I'm sure I topped it up. Improper tube card management, Halibut. You surely recall that since last week, the Energy District tubes require your tube card to be topped up with blue credit. If an onward journey to the social district is intended, in addition to the usual weekly turquoise credit. Wait, but only last month it was a green. I don't make the rules, Harold, but the rules make me. Now let's get you over to the fine secretary so we can all get on with our day. Fell foul of the end user insufficient funds clause. I'm afraid if you really can't pay, you're going to have to think of someone who can. I guess that means you'll have to wait for the professor again. Who knows what she sees in you? Right, I'm needed elsewhere. There's a disturbing rise in the number of people traveling without the appropriate tickets recently. I hope for both our sakes not to see you again soon, Harold. There were the dark times. And slowly but surely... Life Can't you just put this on my account? I'll pay as soon as I... Mr. Halibut, you don't have an account. Not since we blocked it. Please, Mr. Secretary, let me just... I mean, look, can't we... <laughs> Your name is Mr. Secretary? <laughs> uh, my title, young man, is All Water Secretary Number 24. It is not my name. Anyway, I'm afraid All Water Corporation can't be seen to make exceptions. You'll have to go through the proxy payment process like everyone else. With Madame Brenna Castletop the year after. Then... In 13,760 AC, we enjoyed our first instantly iconic so, campaign. So, what are you in for? Oh, I'm just here for the Great Company. Aren't you a little young to start working for Allwater? What? No, I meant because it was a joke, doofus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Could you let me wait in peace now? Oh, sure. we Will do. Have fun. Felix? Hi, Ma! Uh, look, before you say anything... Whatever your excuse is, it'll have to wait. Busy, busy times. Mr. Secretary, please charge whatever Felix's fine is to the company tab, please. Of course, Mrs. Van Der Vaart. Have a pleasant day. You too, Master Van Der Vaart. Freedom! Have fun, Harold! We reluctantly interrupt your daily business for an important... <laughs> for some important information for all inhabitants of the Fedora One. Dear people, crew, and company, we seem to have discovered something super cool. Please do consider to congregate tonight at the Agora Theatre to... for some important information. Oh, Harold, here you are. I've been looking all over. Get your buns to the lab, if you please. I do beg your pardon, ma'am, but there is still the matter of an outstanding fine for Mr. Halibut to find a proxy for. A completely reasonably priced and fairly applied fine, if I do say so myself. Sir, please do not cause me further consternation. Just put it on my tab as always. Come on, Harold. Mr. Halibut, you'll need this before you go. A ticket home? Yes, and only home. It's not valid for any other routes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And your tube pass should be unlocked again within 24 hours. So you'll be back to the luxury of fully automatic tube travel eligibility approval once again. I can't wait. Every time I need you, Harold, it's something else. What's wrong with you? I can't handle your shenanigans while we're in the middle of this mess. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Next time, 
This must have an underlying cause. Hmm. I remember when you were still in school and your teacher telling me about how you would just stare out of the window, oblivious to her even shouting at you. It's like you've never snapped out of that daydream. I was never in a daydream, just the other stuff was boring. Harold, I'm not sure which is worse. The idea of you living with your head in the clouds or never being excited by life. Only boring people get bored. I'm sorry, Professor. is not accessible via your permission slip and you know it destination chosen we hope you enjoy your all water tube system journey you have the arrived reason, sir is that all please exit the tube in an orderly manner temporarily for we hope you travel with us again soon but why isn't the line active what needs improving? A man has a right to know. I don't know the exact decision-making process that led to this, sir. But I assure you, it will be for the good of your overall long-term tube traveling experience. So will we get discounts on the other lines as a result of the inconvenience? Ah, as of yet, there is no discount scheme in place, as we calculated the possible inconvenience to be negligible. Wouldn't need a discount if the prices weren't so high in the first place. I can't comment on the pricing strategy, I'm afraid, sir. I'm just a travel secretary. So what can you comment on? I am authorized to comment on the nature of the tube closure, which is that all water have had to close the line. This location is not accessible via your permission. Destination decided. Enjoy the view. But Harold, I'm tired of chasing after you like you're a stupid butterfly. Hang on. What's a butterfly? That sounds silly. A butterfly is an insect from Earth. They had beautiful patterns on their wings and drank pollen from flowers. I suppose you could say they often appeared in uh, extra natural moments in life. On the other hand, they were terribly inefficient, flighty, overly trusting and delicate. Ergo, you never take responsibility, and I never know where to find you next. I know I drift off a bit sometimes, but... But all water raised the tube fares again, and they never announce it properly. This time it really was an honest mistake. Plus, there was this woman who... Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. There's important work afoot. Oh, yeah. Have you checked the blockage in the filter station yet? And did you need to feed the fish, too? Ah, uh, yes. Those two. I'm on the case. Bye, Professor. <sighs> Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, uh, I'm sure those are all my tasks for the day. You seem to have waylaid your PDA. It really is a wonder you get anything done around here. Ah. Uh. Thanks, Professor. It's got a life of its own. Strangely enough, I noticed you hadn't added your daily task list to it. And I don't want to have to remind you about them again. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Uh, so, I access the list. It'll come back to me. Just go to the four selection buttons. Okay. Um, 
Where were they again? The upper right of the pad! Ah, uh, yeah. Top of the four buttons, right? Cool. Then I use the navigation nub to highlight and then hit the bottom button. Precisely. Okay, great. And it's the rightmost button to go back, right? Indeed. Now hop to it. And I'll see you at the Agora Arcades when you're done. Cyrus about this. Perfect timing. Oh, Senor Tenenbaum, you too. I was just hoping to watch some Sansu's Ashk. Got any idea how to work the old telly? Yeah, I think it's one of those all water ad only models. Ah. Should still be good for watching the announcement on tonight, though, right? You're really gonna watch that? They'll just announce another two price hike again. Well, who knows? Diego from Health Services said he heard something about the reveal of something important. What is Sansu's Ash? Yes, Sansu's Ash. Eternal love. Best and only Turkish novella we have on board. I thought season 18 was bad, but with all the drama around Emery's cousin and whatnot. It's worth powering through to season 36, though. That's where the plot really thickens. I'll try to check it out sometime. What brings you to the lounge, anyway? Did you guess that the tubes to the utility district and the social district are down again? Strangely, yes. I can believe that. Does that mean school is out? Yep. The bambinos are happy, and I don't mind to them off. But if it goes on much longer, they'll forget everything. Won't they do their homework? Maybe. 
The whole That's social cool. district is off limits right now. So at least there won't be much else for them to do. Is that why you're hanging out here? <laughs> Mostly. It's just kind of cozy here, though, you know? Well, I suppose it is. But anyway, don't mind me, Harold. Bye, Chris. See you later, Harold. I'll be here if you want some company. Is your face feeling tired and puffy? Let the kelp help. Hey, Sai. Oh, hey, Harold. Uh, what's going? I, I mean, uh, how's up? Just doing my usual rounds. Trying to clean the fish and feed the filter station. Super nice. How are the fishies doing? They're swimming away, looking good. But there's no food left in the fish feeding machine. Ah, lovely. Yeah, I've been thinking about fish a lot recently. I've been wondering if, you know, even fish blood is such a good fertilizer, what, the slow-release phosphates and nitrogen? But we don't want to hurt fish. If samples were taken, we could somehow synthesize the... Sai, Sai, that sounds very interesting, but what about the food for the fish themselves? Hmm? Oh, yes, sorry, rat. Didn't I restock the other night? <sighs> Must have just thought about it. Now they're formulate some more. You make the fish food yourself? Oh, I do indeed. I'm working on a new recipe at the moment, in fact. But, I mean, can fish even taste? It's not just about taste, it's about nutrition. We want their gills to function optimally, don't we? And their pigments to express as vividly as possible, a bit like flowers. Sigh, sigh. 
new fish food would be great. I'm sure they'll love it. Well, I'll get right on it. Promise. Yeah, I think I have a test batch. Uh, yep, yep. A uh, little taster to keep them going. Uh, you should try some too. Ah, uh, thanks. I'll let you know what they think. see that? Was that fish real? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, even if it wasn't, their methods are getting way more sophisticated lately. Yeah. Mm, I kind of look forward to seeing what stunt they're going to pull next. Me too. As long as I don't have to clean it up. Do you remember their first messages? Ah, uh, yeah. Wasn't it something about Fedora not being able to take off being a conspiracy? Yes, on all those little flyers. Handwritten, too. What did that fish message mean, do you think? Hmm, I guess something about exploring the planet? Didn't it say what's out here? Ooh, like they've hidden something. Maybe they think the ocean is a conspiracy too? Little fishing, your little dishy is now served. Okay, Herald bot diagnostic report. Scanning, scanning, all tasks completed satisfactorily. Enjoyment evaluation, minimal. Energy levels depleted. Recharging required. Next destination, Agora Arcades. Isn't this working? So typical. I suppose the ticket reactivation is still going to take a while. Don't be Hello again. Silly. Hey, Chris. Be ticket not working. Silly. Mind if I watch the announcement with you? Will be my guest. Not that I actually live here. <laughs> oh, it's starting. We chose the stars. Not instead of the Earth, but because of it. We chose sacrifice and responsibility. Uh, well, we didn't, I guess. But our ancestors did. And we wouldn't be here if they hadn't. Uh, left, I mean. We'd be back on Earth. And where would that have got anyone? We may not have ever seen our home, tasted its air, or gazed across its boiling seas, but we remember it. And then we made a new home. 
even if it wasn't quite what anyone had in mind. And one corporation, over all others, helped make that possible. All water. On that note, I'd like to introduce Madam CEO Brenna Castlechop. Good day to you all. As you may know, I am Brenna Castlechop, the CEO of All Water Corporation. More importantly, I'm a citizen of the Pedora just like you. And it's my unmitigated pleasure today to show you what you're about to see. Join me in reliving and celebrating the remarkable journey we've been on together before we unveil the next step of that journey. It may have started with one man, but it took the hearts and minds of many more to make the dream a reality. That dream began at the height of the Cold War, when the world was on the very brink of annihilation. He conceived of an arc-like spacefaring ship, financed by the wealthiest countries, families, and private institutions such as the Schlippmeyer Foundation, as a gesture of global care for the human race. That ship journeyed for 200 years, was home to five generations, and sailed past many solar systems, making fascinating discoveries along the way, like the bacteria that are now responsible for our energy supply, or the mineral samples we took from planets along the way that allow us to build new materials. We had difficulties to deal with too, such as surprise asteroid fields, periods of hopelessness, and the unpleasant, albeit brief, alien infestation. And of course, 120 years after launch, our last message from our beloved Earth in its final moments. After 200 years, we finally arrived at our destination only to find that the promising, watery planet contained no habitable landmass and dense, toxic gases in the atmosphere. Hardly the second Earth we had hoped for. It wasn't long into our new search that the solar winds came. Maybe our ancestors couldn't have possibly known, or maybe they could, that they would cause our ship to crash, just like Icarus, but with worse luck. Either way, we can be thankful for a soft landing and good waterproofing. Wasn't that a wild ride, huh? We've achieved so much aboard the Fedora, but we've never stopped thinking big. We had the idea to make sure we weren't missing out on anything going on outside. We're in a whole new galaxy, so we should be listening to see what the local news is. So we hatched a new plan. A state-of-the-art, deep-space radio boy capable of keeping itself afloat and slowly circumnavigating our watery new home while scanning for signals and interesting cosmic gossip. And, wait for it, yes, we're delighted to announce it's floating to the surface right now. That's right, the boy will be in position in another few hours. Big congratulations and thanks to All Water for making this possible. I'm excited to see what we pick up. For some announcement, huh? Sure, makes for some nice gossip. But I think they should fix the tube system or upgrade the TVs, eh? For this fancy boy drama, eh? Yeah, that'd be nice. What if there really is nothing else out there? Exacto mundo. We should be focusing on inner space before outer, huh? <laughs> yeah, Max. Speaking of inner space, I hope the tickets are working again tomorrow. Que claro. At least I brought some homework to Marsh. Those bambinos will forget everything at this rate. And you've got your trusty couch. Yep, we've gotten to know each other well. Okay, I'm gonna get some sleep. Buona notte, Chris. Buona notte, Harold. And a swirl of sugar mixed with only the best herrings. Fedorans. <laughs> The all-water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Please attend to the necessary travel arrangements. Get ready.
Oh boy. What a day. Here's hoping tomorrow's a bit more relaxed. I could do with a day off. All this running back and forth for people is tiring, man. But, Agent Harrelson, that's what they pay you for. Don't let us down now. Harold. Hello, Professor. What did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. You remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Now, activate the switch next to the bore to open the sample shelf. is in the container on the lower right. You remember your left and right? Bring it to the microscope and insert it into the hatch. Et voila! Check the microscope and finally you'll see what I mean. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun. There's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one for... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured. Yes? But if we're not going to be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Hey. Hey, you're the professor's assistant, Jeremy, right? Um, yes, but no. I'm Harold Halibut. I interned in your section for about a year. Oh, goodness, you're Microwave Boy. So, you do remember me. Yes, how could I forget that debacle? Actually, I've just met with your professor. Is everything okay? Not entirely, but I probably shouldn't be telling you. 
Okay, I'll... But I suppose if Moreau trusts you, I'm a bit worried about our ship's energy reserves. I thought I'd talk to your boss about it. She's the smartest person on board, isn't she? Reserves? Are we in some kind of trouble? Now I've said too much. Ask Moreau. Perhaps she'll tell you more. Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Moreau said I should maybe check with your husband. As a matter of fact, we did. As for my husband, you'll have to ask him, which is more than I've been able to do the past few days. Knowing that infuriating rock collection, I'm sure he'll find you something. He's a sweetheart, really, you know? Go ask him. See you later. Bye, Richard. So... Dare I ask, what is it? So, Bridget told me about some kind of energy shortage, and to ask you about it. Any idea what she meant? Hmm. Yes, she mentioned she may have found a link between something in the water and our solar wind problem. It's speculative, and now isn't the time. That all? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll be off. Be good, Harold. Harold, when you see Cyrus, could you give him a message for me? Sure thing, Professor. Just ask him, how are the details coming along? Okay. I will ask him, but, um... Yes, yes, I know. I could ask him myself, but didn't you stop to wonder why I don't want to? I just did stop to wonder. It's complicated, okay? We go back a long way and don't always see eye to eye, especially on matters of categorization, nomenclature, and subsequent archiving methodology. Not that he ever saw fit to delineate his preferred... <sighs> don't mind me, Harold. I just mean Cyrus has his stubborn phases, and I just can't talk to him when he's in one. Okay, say no more. Your message is safe with me. Actually, Harold... No, it's okay. Nothing. Run along now. You yawn, and a tube queue clears out. Destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. You may now exit the tube. Utterly unconcerned for your own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard for the future of humanity. Harold! Good timing. You can explain things to the Major, can't you? Harold, come here and explain things. And yourself. Major, I'm just passing through. I really don't know what this is about. Hi, Felix. So you're not here to make excuses for this diminutive delinquent? Hey, I'm not diminutive. I've just got longer to live than you. And Harold, tell him about our plan. Harold! I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. 
I should have known you'd be wrapped up in this. I'm not in trouble. There is no plan. Are you questioning my authority and or organizational merit? What? No, Major. I... If I find out you're a bad influence on young Felix here... Not me. Major. Whatever Felix did, I'm sure it was meant innocently. And how would you know about that? Unless you're in league with him. I just meant... I mean, if you just relax. Relax? Harold, you're really starting to tweak my beak. Uh, but, but, what did Felix do anyway? Utterly unconcerned for his own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard. Anyway, Major, under whose jurisdiction is Harold in trouble? Mine! I'm the law here. Felix, will you be a witness to this? Absolutely. And can you testify to Harold's involvement? Only if he's willing to testify to mine. Harold, tell the truth now. It'll be easier in the long run. I haven't witnessed anything to testify. Damn it! Then the case is in danger of falling apart. I'm sure Felix's parents will deal with this. Good point. They should really be present while you question me, Major. I'm only a minor. Don't you throw the book at me, son. Where are they anyway? I don't know. And good luck finding them. Oh no, Felix, have you lost them? Harold, leave this to the professionals. Felix, do you mean to tell me you've neglected to file a missing person or persons report? Shouldn't we look for them? Don't change the subject. But Major, what is the subject? That's right, Harold. Know your rights. If, and I mean if, you're acting as some kind of heroic big brother figure to this young man, I expect you to be a positive influence. I, we, th there's no... Come on, spit it out, man! Just leave me alone, Sandstrom. I've got fish to feed. Okay, Harold, but your fish won't save you if I catch you red-handed. Now, Felix! Where is Felix? Oh, no. Felix? Harold, you've lost him! Gah! Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, eight, right? I'm afraid not. You must be thinking of my brother, Secretary Eight. Or Secretary 24, of course. Oh, sorry. I always get that mixed up. There are just three of you, right? Well, now, uh, three of us work for Old Water, yes. Oh, so there's another who doesn't? Hmm, yes, Secretary Eight is the man to ask about that. He remembers it all much better than I do. Remembers? Okay. Sounds serious. Anyway, I'm neglecting my post. Welcome to the Agora Arcades. Would you like to partake in the monthly All Water Raffle Bonanza? Oh, sure. Wait, is it free to enter? Certainly. The raffle is a generous gesture of frivolity from All Water to you, the citizens of Fedora. What are the prizes? Well, there's a long list of luxuries. A plethora of pleasurable prizes. The full list can be perused at your leisure on the All Water Public Access Forum. Okay, I'm ready. I'll just spin her up. Drum roll, please. And... Looks like you were unlucky this time, but that's life. Try again next month. Thank you. 
What do you think about the announcement, then? Well, I think it sounds exciting, Alon. You think everything sounds exciting? Well, that new boy thing and all. Might give us something new to natter about. Hey, Tommy. I don't suppose you'll be back in the shop soon? <sighs> or, I mean, I can come back later? Oh, no. What do you need? It's just that the professor and I need some sea rocks. I mean, filter rocks from older times that have come from the filters, and I feel like you might have one? Shh, quiet! Don't be mentioning Filter Frankie! You know that every piece of my inventory is legally obtained, or, or legally found, right? Right, sure. That's why I'm here, to legally acquire an item of yours that you may have. Okay, look and listen here, Longy Long Pants. I shut the store for a reason, you know? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you Longy Long Pants just then. You sure you don't want me to come back another time? It's fine. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I've got this gut feeling that my beautiful angel wife don't care about me no more. Oh. No, I know I'm oversharing again. Tommy, you gotta stop oversharing. Look, kid, either way, I'm not gonna be of any help to you today. Ah, uh, if you're sure. Yeah, you just caught me on a blue note, that's all. She's been spending so much time with that beautiful chunk of marble. You know, the guy in the silk robe and the flowing locks? You're cool. So be cool all of the time with my patented Consta Cool fabrics. So you see, that's the slippy difference. And if you just watch this exciting infomercial, ah, uh, Harold, if it isn't my favorite multi-maintenance man. Wait, are you sure I can't interest you in... Oh, never mind. Hello, how's business? You're an everyman, right? I've made a new ad and I need your opinion. I mean, I think it's great, but maybe it's too high concept. Oh, well, I'm not really qualified to... Nonsense, just watch. I was trying to read a book in the comfort of my own home, but my own home wasn't comfortable. It was too hot to concentrate. Will I ever be able to read to my children? or enjoy the adventures of the Fedora 4 from my armchair again. Why, yes, of course you will. With my patented, tried and tested aircon system, you'll always be able to keep your brain, books, and body sweat free and as cool as Jimson Jameson himself. Please note, Slippy's aircon system is not officially endorsed by the creators of the Fedora 4 or their likenesses. Sometimes I just can't get cozy. How's a man supposed to look after his family with cold arms? My family are depending on me. What am I going to do? Clad yourself in one of our triple insulating cozy jackets and matching thermal underwear, of course. You know what they say, warm hands, warm hearts. Slippies means heritage. I'm the latest in a long tradition of winter sports enthusiasts. Slipmires throughout history have kept everyone from royalty to the common man warm and cozy in their pursuits of the great outdoors. Slippies means social responsibility. The Schlippmeyers were one of the most generous sponsors of the Fedora One project, giving back to the people, sharing their knowledge of insulation technologies and considerable wealth to keep humanity warm and cozy among the stars. Remember, you deserve to live and work at whatever temperature is right for you. With over 200 years of expertise, you can bet the weather forecast shows slippies across the board. Come in out of the cold and into slippies. Slippies, heat protection so good, it'll be a cold day in hell. Well, what did you think? Um... It was... there were lots of things, and... Uh... Great! So glad you agree! And while you're here... I was just going... 
Ah, oh, come on. You can't go without testing my new half-pipe experience. It's new and improved by a little modification to my patented aircon system that I'm calling the Freezer! Is that... do I have to... I'm glad you asked. It combines precise atmospheric condition synthesis with the ski sim to recreate the most lifelike experience of skiing you can dream of! That sounds... uh, wait. Me? Skiing? But I don't... Nonsense! I'm sure you're a natural! Now let's get you strapped in! Slippy by name, but you're slippy by nature. <laughs> I guess so. I'd really better go now. Sure, sure, but just so you know, I run a pretty generous referral scheme, if you're interested. For every customer you get. Got a dash. Okay, Harold. Be skiing ya. Where's the blue rock? The bane of my day. Where's Tommy when you need him? Hey there. The name is Eve not there oh sorry eve can i help you mister no just came to visit rafi what you're playing oh some game i'd rather be reading but here we are what do you like to read anything really you know at the moment hegemony and the pan liberalism agenda of agnostic psychopolitic mostly that's a book yes Say, did you know Captain at Large Baronhout holds the high score in this game? No, that's cool. I always wondered what those initials at the top of the leaderboard meant. Yeah, well, see ya. Oh, hey, Rafi. Hmm, Harold. Is everything okay? The tube route to the school in the social district is out. Oh, right. Makes sense. Annoying. That's not what's annoying. Oh? Kids. Everywhere. All the time. No school means no peace. They're just hanging around. Taking space. Playing all the arcades. Oh dear. But isn't that what this place is for? Kind of? Oh. I see. Good luck. Oh, Onat. Hey, how 
is it going, Harold? Not too shabby, thanks. How about you? I'm super, actually. I found a book. Oh, cool. What kind of book? It was just discovered. A book written on Earth. Nobody on the station has read it yet. Apart from me. Wow, what's it about? Stick around and you'll find out. My newest performance piece is a reading of it. Oh, nice. Which part? All of it, Harold. All of it. Without interruption. It's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up. Wow, okay. Good luck. Hey, buddy. Hey, Harold. Great to see you. How about that announcement, eh? Yeah, it was really something. It sure was. I try not to busy myself with those kinds of affairs. I'm just happy you're joining in for the station jog. The jog? Uh, I was only... Chris promised me he'd be here any minute. Now we've really got a jog team on our hands. I think I'll pass. No one's forcing you, Harold. But why don't you keep me company until Chris arrives? Okay, that I can do. How's the post today? Ah, oh, it's a bit slow, what with the tube to the utility district being out, so I can't really work. Not working makes me so restless. I hope it's back soon. Good thing you have the arcades to jog around. Yep, and Chris can't get to the school for the same reason. So at least we'll have plenty of time to work out together. That young man is almost as fit as me. Why do I feel like I'm the odd one out? Oh, hey, Chris. Last to arrive, first to finish. That's my motto. Harold, won't you stay? The jog team won't be the same without you. Yeah, venga, Harold. You can't leave now, I just got here. Jog team, jog team, jog team. Um, okay. Go jog team. Guys! Guys! Go on! With... I thought... I was... fit. Good show, Harold. How's everyone feeling? I think there was a new personal best for me. Fine. Fine, thanks, buddy. How'd you both keep so fit? Oh, you know me, Harold. I've been running around this station for years. Gotta keep up my reputation for same-day service after all. Healthy body, healthy mind. That's what keeps me going. Gotta set a good example for those lazy students of mine, too. <laughs> Have you got any tips? Just keep on moving, Harold. You never know when you'll have to slow down, so keep going while you can. Sample our homegrown fedora fish or our freshwater catch of the day. And what's the catch of the day today? Today, we have the great spotted super grouper. That sounds tasty. Uh, just out of interest, is that a native fish? Ah, to tell, man. You know, a few of the ship's fish escaped during the crash. So we don't know if they thrive in the ocean or even intermingle with native species. But... We can guarantee that fresh super grouper taste you know and love. Hello again. 
You know where we are? Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. Please hold. You're here. Thank you for choosing all the options. The disinfectant. Inspecting. Contaminant detected. Please do not panic. Mist commences in three. Three. Wait for it. Zero. Please halt for your contaminant inspection. Oh, there's Bridget. And Chris? What are they doing in there? I can't hear them, but maybe I can lip read. Hmm, seems like Bridget is pretty excited about something. It looks like she's saying... It's unacceptable. Tommy would realize... It's just not worth the risk. Ooh, Chris is replying. Let's see. Maybe you're right. It could go so wrong. Anyway, we should get back before people notice. Hmm, <clears throat> pretty mysterious. Now I wish I'd never skipped those lip reading classes. Hello, Sai. How's it going? Oh, it's been tough, Harold. Every detail has a detail. It's like this filigreed... Oh, uh, it's good you're here, actually. Yeah? What do you need? Well, I'm having a bit of difficulty with a 3D printer. It's leaving gaps everywhere. Oh, okay. Shall I take a look? Yes, please. But I hope you're better with technology than you are with the ladies. Um, I hope so, too. Anyway, see if you and your screwdriver can get this printer its third dimension back. You have to undo the screws first to remove the front panel.
you see that hole? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harold. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Sai, was the printer even broken? Maybe, maybe. If it's any consolation, I discovered this little trick the hard way. Ow! Why didn't you just fix it then? Well, where would the fun have been in that? I'm not sure I'd like your idea of fun. Hmm, funny. Sunny says the same thing to me. But I guess she didn't like your idea of fun either, eh? Ow. Think of it as a wake-up call, Harold. Yeah, a little extra juice. Oh, that reminds me. Moreau asked me to ask you, how are the details coming along? Oh, thanks, Harold. Just like her to ask that. <laughs> Is it? No, anyway, see you next time, Sai. Uh, one more thing. What is it, Sai? Could you take Maro a message? I suppose. Is it just gonna be like hers? No, 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 nothing like that. It's something definitely unrelated. So, what's the message? Oh, okay, fine. You got me. Happy? Just tell her procedure smeecher and that she puts the why are you in Cyrus. I don't know that's such a good idea. I mean, what is this whole thing about exactly, anyway? She started it! Back in the days, we were both part of the Archive Club. She was always so darn keen to throw away all the rules and invent new archiving procedures. She called it a healthy distrust for calcified mental models. But all it did was stop us ever getting anything done. So, you disagreed about archiving? Precisely. But it was fundamental. I mean, we respected each other's work, but there was this deep difference. And I guess neither of us was willing to budge. So, what did you decide about the archives? That's not important anymore. Come on, man. Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So, no message for her? <sighs> Just tell her I say hi. She'll know what I mean. Okay. Catch you later, Sai. nominated. Journey commencing. All water thanking you. Thank you for traveling with all water. What do you know about Filter Frankie? Filter Frankie? Yeah, Frankie, who likes filters. Hence, Filter Frankie. Right, well, I heard he's always mucking about in the filters, digging up all sorts that he sells to Tommy. What I want to know is, why doesn't anyone just go down there and... I'm, I'm sorry to bother you again, but I went looking for Mrs. Vandervart, and she was at the harvest office. None news. It's her office. Where else would she be? I know, but it's more who was there with her that I thought, you know, I should mention. What? Who was she with? It looked totally professional. I didn't see anything bad. Just Senor T Tinnerbaum. Ah, uh, what? What's he doing in her office? There's no way he knows enough about energy. If I still had my own hair, it would never have come to this. Tommy, I'm sure it's not like that. I just... You don't understand, Harold, what it's like to get old. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna take this lying down. Tommy, I don't think you should, uh, get angry. And you're in on this with me now, Harold. You did the right thing bringing this to me. 
I'm really sure it's nothing, just a lunch chat. I've just been so busy working on this damned store sign, thinking Bridget would love the ambition, you know? See me as a real go-getter again. But maybe this whole time I should have been showing her signs of my love. I'll bet she knows you- You're absolutely right. We'll modify the sign. Tonight, make it into a great big sparkly neon proclamation of my, nay, our love. A sign she won't be able to miss. A sign to blind that glossy maned Casanova. I mean, I'm not sure that's the sign. Don't doubt it, Harold. This is gonna work. I just feel it. You're in, right? Will you help me save our love? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try. Knew I could count on you. Let's get to work. I'm gonna go freshen up a little. Might even put on a different outfit now that I think of it. Will you go and look for Bridget for me? My dear Bridget, I'm sorry we haven't been able to spend much time together recently. So I get how you might be attracted to the man-machine with the flowing looks of an angel that you call your friend. But I do beg you to give me another chance. Please, Bridget, will you let me back into your heart and take this monument to our love as a sign of my great affection? Tommy, of course I love you. And I would never betray you. I just wanted to give you some space. I saw you working so hard on your new sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Couldn't tell me what? Oh, what the heck. The ship's facing some issues with the energy budget. I knew you would need a lot of light for your sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Ha! No way we've got an energy problem here. That was it? No helping Tinner Bomb with his spray tan? That was it. No spray tan. I'm so sorry, Buttercupsy. I love you. I love you. Thank you for your help, Harold. I was hoping you'd accept this stone as a thank you. Ah! Oh, no. Moreau won't be happy to hear about this. <laughs> Ah, oh, Harold, listen about the rock. I'm really sorry it's gone. You know, I would have loved for you to have it. Uh, it's okay, Tommy. It wasn't your fault. I just feel bad, you know. I was so wrapped up in my own stuff, maybe... Ah, uh, I don't know. Thanks, Tommy. Maybe it'll turn up. I'm just glad you and Bridget made up. Thanks, Harold. You're a swell guy. I'll keep my eyes peeled, let you know if I hear anything. Thanks, Tommy. Got you a message. Oh, thank you, Miss... Zoodle, pleased to make your acquaintance. So, it's from Felix. He says there's something he wants to show you and to expect a secret message soon. Oh, what? Why? I mean, and why couldn't he just have said that to me himself? I don't know. Go ask him. My work here is done. Later's, mister. Thanks. All water. Moving people every day. We know you enjoy traveling with all water. You're welcome. Oh. 
graffiti? What good is asking where is home anyway? Where else are we gonna go? Could they just leave some notes around? I wonder if this is the light keepers again, or just someone copying their style. Will they ever reveal themselves? I'm not going to believe this. Why does that not surprise me? The blue rock. It's gone. You found it? You lost it? It was stolen from Tommy's store. This is utterly vexatious, Harold. I know. Oh, and I also got a message from Cyrus for you. Out with it, then. He says... Hi. Hi? Just hi? Yeah, just that. He said you'd know what it means. He's a sly one sometimes. I'll give him that. Stubborn as a mule. What's a mule? Oh, don't start, Harold. I've got to think of a comeback. I mean, get some important work done. What should we do? We? I need time to think. Madam CEO, you're going to want to hear this. I'm listening. It's the new boy, ma'am. It's picked up a signal that we have reason to believe originates from Earth. Earth? Have you reverse dated the transmission? We have. It was sent in 2102. So 126 years after we left. Things would have been pretty rock bottom back there by then. Let's hear what was important enough for them to call after us. Maybe it was their final farewell, huh? <laughs> I hope it's nothing too awkward. Okay, I'll send a copy via... Well, just play it to me. I've got a 1205. But, Mom, it's only 10. And one of those. Okay, playing back now. This is Earth. Earth to the Fedora. Boy, you were sure hope you're all okay. Whoever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Johnston! Cut the damn line! You're live! What? Oh, fudge! Professor? Did you hear that strange message? It was hard to miss. It's the first message from Earth. Ever? Certainly in my lifetime, at least. I wonder, what kind of message would a dying civilization speculatively send to a ship that can never return? What do you think it means? It means that the fact Allwater haven't shared it publicly yet means they're thinking about how to turn it to their advantage. What if... It's not the first message. Don't be paranoid, Harold. What reason or authority would they have for keeping messages from us? Still, even if they had planned to share it immediately, they look suspicious now. Gosh, that message could be anything. Maybe they've got information for us about our mission. Hmm. Well, what could that information be? If we presuppose... Yes? Oh, it's you. Yes? No. Indubitably. Fine. What? 15%? Out of the question. Okay, sure. See you shortly. Harold, I want you to come with me. Huh? To where? What? Who was that? Why? It was the CEO of Allwater Corp, of course, asking me to jump. What for? How high? Indeed, Harold. Indeed. Well, unfortunately for my bath, she was adamant we went there immediately. 
She even unlocked our tube tickets for emergency night travel. But why? What does she want with us? Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? Come on, let's not keep Her Highness waiting. Crisis control. We need to get out there ahead of the turn in public sentiment. First move advantage and get this working for us, not against us. Yes, come in, come in, come in. Now, as you both know, time is of the essence. Sorry, where are my manners? Would either of you like something to drink? Ah, I suppose I might like a coffee? There's really no time for coffee. Time is of the essence. Professor, would you like to sit? No, thank you. I prefer to stand. Oh, a woman of action, I love that. Anyway, we must act. Due to the unfortunate comic incident, we've been forced to move up the schedule. It's imperative we deliver some good news about the start procedure. Hmm. I suppose that wouldn't hurt. To that effect, Professor, and um, you there. I'll need you to supervise Cyrus directly. We can't afford for any unforeseen delays. Cyrus, he works best undisturbed. The man is a stubborn buffoon, but there's no doubting his thoroughness. Professor, please. It would do this old heart good to know that you were keeping a watchful eye on him. Or maybe your, um, protege here could do it. I'll hang out with, I mean, watch Cy, sure. If it makes you happy, Madame CEO, we'll make sure Cyrus delivers. Great. Music to my ears. Thank you both. You've done all water and the ship a great service. We're ready. Go live and stay on schedule. It's my privilege to announce to you all today that our new boy program has already proven an unmitigated success. We present to you now the full and unedited audio that represents the first incoming message we've received in our lifetimes. Now, before the message plays, I'd like to take a moment to reiterate just how proud we should all be of progress on the new start procedures. It won't be long before we're ready for the first attempt, the latest in a long line of steps on the road to a greater, brighter future for us all. Please enjoy this message, brought to you by the All Water Corporation. This is, uh, uh to the Fedora. Well, we sure hope you're all okay, whomever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Things were pretty rocky here when you left, of course, and, you know, that was a brave move. Probably the right decision at the time. We didn't know whether to even tell you this, but we figured maybe it would give you some comfort way out there in the freezing clutches of deep space. What? Oh, right. Yeah, I guess. Or, I mean, even better, the comforting, warm embrace of a lovely, habitable new planet. Well, we just wanted to let you know that we pulled together down here. The sparrows calmed down and things pretty much worked themselves out. Life still isn't perfect. Bananas died out. And you've got to be pretty careful around water. But by and large, we're back on track. I've survived. Wish we could send you a postcard. Anyway, be safe, and maybe one day we'll get a hello from you. We'll be listening. What are you all still doing here? Don't you have work or something to do? Scram! Welcome. I am All Water Automated Secretary Number One. How may I assist your All Water related learning? Can you tell me about the current CEO? CEO Brenna Castle Chop began her All Water career at the age of 16. 
She graduated from her internship to a full-time position after she devised a mathematical theory to reduce the calculations needed to make different electronic systems communicate with one another. These improvements would eventually become the basis for the ship's current intranet system, architected by temporary all-water employee, a redacted, codenamed Dr. Computer. During this time, the Schlippmeyer family and the Freshwater Clarification Agency were engaged in a dispute over the ship's water supply, the former holding a chemically-based freeze filtration system over the current but outdated machinery. Castlechop wrote a proposal to improve the existing system by overhauling its connective mechanics, which led to all water being able to reject the Schlippmeyer's costly license fees. Her expertise, including her initiative to renew the physical connection between water reservoirs, filtration systems, and the various districts, eventually evolved into the tube transportation system and saw her promoted to sub-chief of the directive branch of operations. She finally became CEO in 13152 AC after widespread pressure throughout the organization on the incumbent CEO, Dr. Rufus Bureaucratze, to finally step down and let the Wonderkind take charge of all water at last. Bye. The All Water Corporation wishes you a pleasant day. at large Baronhout? Ah, uh, hello. Uh, how are you, uh, um... I'm Harold Halibut, sir. Uh, yes, I'm sure you are. Harold, tell me, have you ever felt lost? Oh, I always get lost around here. Uh, no, Harold, I mean, feeling like you have no purpose. I know my purpose, but sometimes it doesn't seem very important. You heard the leak, I presume? Yeah, of course. That leak... That one message, it's undone me. If my whole family, this whole mission, the ship, my captaincy at large, what if it was all a mistake? Oh, I see. Well, maybe Earth didn't get as bad as people thought it would, but we're still us. And you know, it wasn't us that chose to fly away. I suppose. Speaking of which, have you ever lost someone, Harold? Have you? Yes. Someone important. She's gone, Harold. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What happened? Coco has taken an... unscheduled leave of absence. Oh, so she's not lost forever? No, I'm sure she'll return eventually. But every moment without her, I spend in longing and despair. Is it anyone I might know? My beloved? Her name is Coco. Oh, not sure I've ever met her. Do you want to see a picture? Coco is a bird. Harold, you're such an understanding sort. Could you try to find her for me? I'd look for her myself, but in these uncertain times, I think it's best I don't leave my post. So, about Coco... Yes. Such loyal first mate. Does she maybe have any favorite hiding places? Hmm. Not that I know of. I did find her once in a broom closet trying to hatch a sea sponge inside my hat. I promise to keep an eye out for her. Oh, Harry. I hope she's okay. I'm not sure she has another friend in the world. Are you sure you wanted to be me looking for her? Whatever are you implying? I'm sure you're perfectly capable, um, and I'm thoroughly and otherwise engaged. Why?
water compliments you on your choice of destination. All water, we get you where you're going. Travel in style with all water. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest and all water will be Hey, Professor. Oh, are those the new teacups? Come and see for yourself. Oh, I promise I ordered them. Harold, just look.